will admit all now so that they can join. So our cameras will be only the one who is open in terms of uh, mic and video. And we will ask the participants to uh, close their uh, mic and video and uh, camera. And the only way for the interaction will be through the poll questions and the, uh, the chat. Uh, Ibrahim and uh, Ibrahim, could you please, when we start the webinar, to also put this information about to change the name uh, in Zoom? And please admit all now. Uh, you have now you are a co-host, so please admit all while I'm talking. Uh, we will start exactly at uh, two thirty, or a little bit one minutes before, so that we can have all people with us. Hassan, so you'll be guiding us through uh, directing the questions to us, or how, right? Yes. So okay. we will start uh, by Dr. Ha after the welcoming, uh, we, uh, Dr. Hazem and Angel Khaldun, then I will come to you discussing what are the challenges, and then we open the discussion on, uh, on, uh, on uh, depending on the poll questions that we have. So it would be around, as we said, the challenges and opportunities and the way forward. So we have so, uh, so far 60. We're going to record this anyway, Hassan, true? Yes, yeah, sure, yeah. So we can also publish it on the Aqua website and the Middle East Water Forum platform. Exactly. Uh, so, um, so many people will see it and have the chance to see the discussion and the questions and the polls you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, this platform, Your Excellency, is uh, managed to record everything, Yanni. Yeah. Got it. So we have 66, maybe we just wait one minute until we have like 100 or something, and then we can go forward. Okay, we can start now. Hello and, and welcome everyone. It was great pleasure to welcome you in this important webinar. I'm Dr. Hassan Abu Naga, researcher at Cologne University of Applied Sciences and Vice Chair of Middle East Water Forum. Thank you for taking the time to join us today as we talk about the need for digital transformation of water sectors, discussing the key challenges and the opportunities and the way forward for the future of water especially in the Arab region, the most water scarce region in the world. Before we start our webinar, a housekeeping information. 
please change your name in the Zoom to ease communication. To, uh, to do so, please click on the participants button at the top of the Zoom window. Next, to hover your mouse over your name in the participants list on the right side at the, at the Zoom window, and then click on rename so that you can uh, we can uh, communicate with you. We have also a chat box to source your questions. We will also have a poll questions to make our webinar interactive. Feel free also to drop your questions on the topic or share your experiences. We will answer your question at the end of the panel discussion. And the Samar and Ibrahim, our young professionals, will collect the most voted questions. So our distinguished panel answers them. Also, don't worry about making the notes immediately since we will send all webinars recording your way after the webinar. So without further ado, let me introduce to the agenda of the webinar for the coming one and a half hour. We will also, we will start by giving you a brief on the participants and the panel. Then we would have an opening remarks by Dr. Hazem al Nasser, the chairman of Middle East Water Forum and the engineer Khaldun Khashman, the Secretary General of Arab Countries Water Utilities Association, Aqua. We will then start our discussion with the distinguished panelists and the last 30 minutes would be for q and A. I will share the screen with you. So as you can see, we have a 300 participants who registered to our webinar. Uh, the majority of them, 60% they are male and the other, the other 30 is female. And we have uh, in terms of age, both young water professionals and water professionals coming from different organi organizations, mainly from uh, uh, academia, from ministry and water utility, which are the main stakeholders when it comes to implementing digital transformation in the water sector. In terms of areas of professional work, as you can see, most of them, uh, or 50%, they are coming from the scientific, and the majority is mainly is coming from, uh, or 50% is coming from the engineering background and the scientific. And in terms of the knowledge on this subject, you would find here uh, that 50% uh, uh, have uh, it, it, it's 50% it, is mainly limited experience with digital transformation of the water se sector. So it means it's a new topic for uh, many people and also with limited experience for 30%. So we have uh, now 23% uh, of our participants who has really extensive knowledge uh, in the topic. And as you can see, 60 countries uh, the participants are coming from 60 countries, so it's uh, uh, for us as an international event, we focus mainly on uh, the MENA region. So uh, we can start now uh, the opening remarks and welcome uh, by Dr. Hazem Nasser, the chairman of uh, the Middle East Water Forum. Thank you. Thank you, Hassan, and uh, I would like to join you and uh, 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 welcome our distinguished speakers and participants for today's webinar. Um, a warm welcome to everybody, and um, I hope, as usual, uh, this webinar will be a, a successful one. Um, also, uh, this time, I'm very pleased to have today's webinar in joint cooperation with the Arab Countries Water Utility Association. Um, uh, as well as the Middle East Water Forum, because both uh, organizations are covering um, uh, a quite good number uh, of the countries in the Middle East and North Africa. Um, um, the Middle East Water Forum uh, ran a series of important webinars this year and last year, uh, from transboundary issue to very technical uh, webinars. Um, and um, very pleased to uh, announce that um, all these webinars were of interest and importance to the participants. Uh, just a brief uh, note on the Middle East Water Forum. A Middle East Water Forum is a pioneer platform uh, with a regional perspective on raising uh, public awareness and enhancing 
uh, management of water uh, resources uh, by adopting effectiveness, efficiency, integration, and sustainability through uh, exchange of data expertise and innovative technologies uh, throughout the Middle East area. Um, the mission is to promote best practices for cooperation and exchange of knowledge, uh, of knowledge among various parties and stakeholders involved in the water sector. Um, also, um, the Middle East Water Forum uh, main interest is toward a regional water security by enhancing, by disseminating, by integrating all approaches that will lead us to such a uh, important uh, goal, which is uh, water security for the uh, Middle East area. Um, I will stop at this point, Hassan, and uh, give the floor to uh, His Excellency Engineer Khaldun. Uh, please unmute yourself, uh, uh, Engineer Khaldun. We are always controlled by the uh, uh, afternoon, everybody, as uh, I was presented with His Excellency and uh, my friend, Dr. Hassan. My name is Khaldun Khishman, Secretary General of Aqua. Aqua is a non governmental, non profit organization. I started establishing in 2006 and launched from Amman in 2009, hosted by the Jordan government with agreement with the Ministry of Water and uh, Irrigation in Jordan. We are registered in the Foreign Affairs Ministry as a regional platform organization that can have the ability to work in Amman. Uh, since that, now Aqua is developed, we have more than 108 uh, public water utility from 18 Arab countries, more than 50 uh, private sector or, uh, companies working in water and wastewater, and more than 300 uh, expert members working in water again. Uh, with uh, a big network of cooperation with international organization, IWA, Water Water Council, GBD. We are recognized by the Arab Water Ministerial Council in last uh, Arab uh, League of us, uh, Arab States League uh, as uh, one of uh, civil organization that technically supporting the Arab Water Ministerial Council. Uh, since that, we are working in our mission to have partnership with our utilities to uh, improve, to host the best practices, improve the capacity, and mainly we are working in studies, consultation, training, and certification uh, programs. Registered with the uh, Association Board of Certification in uh, Florida as regulatory body. Uh, for this uh, subject of webinar, uh, our cooperation start with with the uh, MENA Water Forum, based on the uh, agreement that we will have signed together uh, to help the utilities and disseminate knowledge. Uh, for this topic exactly, I know that the most efficient utility and the most uh, sustainable unit utility that it can transform itself to more digital using the uh new technology uh, we have some experience in that regarding controlling non-revenue water and uh, transforming the network to for self uh, operating and sustained and this will give the operator and the decision maker how to manage and operate its network talking in this subject is very big and very huge talking about integration of all the systems used in the utilities, all the operational systems, and et cetera. Uh, for this, I will come everybody again and uh, give the floor again to the moderator. Thank you. Thanks so much, uh, Engineer Khaldun and uh, Dr. Uh, Hazem Al Nasser for your welcoming remarks. I think with, uh, with such a topic is really uh, interest for everyone, for all water stakeholders especially in our region. So to firstly, to make the webinar interactive, we will launch the first poll question, 
which is mainly focusing on do you see a need for digital transformation in the water sector? So you will see it, and then we we start now our uh, panel discussion. Uh, we have uh, today uh, Dr. Ahmed Mawad. He is a leading expert in Egypt and the vice chairman of the Egypt's holding company for water and wastewater. Uh, welcome, uh, Dr. Ahmed. Uh, so mainly, uh, you know, as, as a holding company uh, for water and wastewater uh, in Egypt is really affiliated with uh, 27 governments, 25 companies. So it's uh, one of the biggest uh, holding company in, in the MENA region. So giving is a key uh, water challenges in Egypt uh, from increasing demand as an aging infrastructure do you see a need for digital transformation in uh, water sector? And what are barriers to digitalization from your experience? The floor is yours. Dr. Ahmed, can you hear us? I cannot connect the, the, the it's frozen, I don't know why. Can you share? Can you let me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, okay. I cannot. I cannot put the video on. Actually, anyway, okay. uh, my name is Ahmed Mawad. Thank you. Sorry. I said Mahdi, you may support. Oh, I don't know. I must say the my screen is frozen, but uh, I cannot share my video with you. Anyway, uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me to such an event, and uh, I agree with you, of course, that. Still, yes, I'm here. Okay. Okay, I'm here then. Uh, I agree with you, Hassan, that, that of course I agree that uh, there is a need to uh, introduce the digital transformation. And uh, let me first start that uh, when I first start thinking about this webinar, I mean, if we want to define the digital transformation, digital transformation itself is a very broad word. And uh, if you go and say, for example, it's uh, is trying to work on digitizing the procedures and the work cycles and the documents and moving as a paperless work. That's one definition. But we discover it all, of course not. I mean, uh, I'm sure that uh, all of the utilities uh, in different ways, they are applying what we call digital transformation. But there is always the front end. We as utilities deal with the customers. So there is uh, always a need to, to facilitate the, the, the correspondences and the, all the relationship between us and the customer to, to for, for the customer satisfaction and this needs that we need to establish platforms and make the e-payments available and so forth and in the back end there's all the procedures of the working day-to-day -day operation as in German uh, Khaldun mentioned for example the NRW is an issue having a platform for JAS's uh, uh, all the trans all the um, controlling systems for the operation of the waste or waste treatment plants so the activities are, are, are actually uh, major and uh, maybe we can take a chance of this webinar to sort of establish when I say utility is applying digital transformation. Is it 100% applying? Is it 50%? Do we have KPIs for measuring this digital transformation? Do we have roadmap for implementation of digital transformation? So I think uh, um, this webinar will open lots of questions and uh, Khaldun, as uh, we're all we are always in, 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 in cooperation with Aqua, this can uh, pave a way for really mutual cooperation, and this is not it's not a one or two or three activities. It's a major activities. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks so much, uh, Dr. Ahmed. Uh, and now we have Professor Brian Savik. He is a CEO of KWR Institute uh, in Netherlands. It is a Dutch drinking water company's uh, collective research organization. Uh, welcome, Professor Dragon, and uh, you are a leading expert in digital transformation of uh, the water sectors. So uh, you could better ask, tell us what are the key its challenges uh, for implementing a digital transformation, and how do you see the implementation of uh, digital transformation now in the water sector? Thank you, and I'm really glad to be here today. So thank you for the invitation. Um, I think uh, what I could say is that um, technology is not the barrier uh, to digital transformation. Technology is widely available, is relatively, relatively cheap, although um, 
when you compare it to the cost of water in many countries and even in in the MENA region, uh, the water is not uh, priced appropriately. So it's very kind of difficult to to fund um, some of those activities. So for me, technology is not the issue. The issue is people, the culture of the organizations that we are dealing with. These are very important organizations. If you're talking about water and sanitation, you're talking about health preserving um, organizations. I put them at equal level, like with our medical, um, you know, hospitals and doctors, because we, we, or the water sector protects um, the population uh, with providing clean water and taking away um, wastewater. So in my view, I think um, it is the organizational culture that we have to take. And we know that culture is, is not something that can be done overnight. For me, again, there is no question, do we need digital transformation or not? Because digital transformation has already started. Um, uh, Mr. Muhammad has mentioned, you know, is it uh, that we do digitalization of the processes? Yeah, that's also part of it, but not the main thing. The main thing is for us to understand where is our water, where do we need it, what quality level do we need it, are we wasting water like uh, non-revenue water or uh, are we polluting our environment? And all of that can be done through uh, better through digital means. Just imagine um, a water cycle, complete water cycle that we have every piece of information available. Much easier to manage, much easier to know how much energy we are using, how much CO2 emissions, where the water is going and so on. So again, the barriers are in the organizational structures that we already have. And it's not just Egypt or it's not just uh, Middle East, it's everywhere in the world. And we have to have both top down and bottom up approach. What do I mean top down? I also mean governments, not just the bosses of the organizations or of the companies or water suppliers, but also the governments who realize the value of water for their public and also to give incentives financial and, and, and policy incentive. But bottom up, we need to also explain to the people working in the field, working in this um, kind of uh, technology side of things with the old technology, that the new technology is not going to take their jobs away. So the key here is that they need to be trained to use the new technology. I've, I've done some, some work in the past where we looked, you know, the pilots of those two planes that went down with over 300 uh, people on it, they were not trained by using particular piece of software that was built into those um, airplanes. So the same thing, you know, if you have new technology, you have to train. Your human has to be part um, of that loop. That's all for me for the time being. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Dragan. I, I think, as you said, digital transformation is not about only technology. It's about people. It's about policies. It's about the culture around it. So it's really very uh, important to address all the aspects of digital transformation in a holistic way. So regarding the, we had the, the, the first poll and the first uh, uh, and the second poll question. So maybe Samar, if you can present the results of it uh, to see, and then we can go forward with uh, the, our next speaker, uh, Professor uh, Lars Rebi. So yeah. could you please, uh, yeah, say the Yeah, uh, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to, you to our webinar. Regarding the first question about the need for digital transformation that a uh, significant majority of people has said, yeah, it's definitely uh, a need. There is a definitely a need for uh, digital transformation in water sector. And um, also some say that it could be an option and uh, the, less, uh, the less participation was not sure about this. Yeah, uh, the second question also? Yes. So okay. Yeah, 
This is the results for the second question. And um, the results was like uh, so-so between the, uh, the, uh, the whole uh, uh, the whole option, but the most uh, predominant was finding resources of funding or uh, resources of financial funding for uh, applying digital transformation. The second one is that the lack of uh, clarity about the economic income. People are not sure that it's uh, the cost benefit analysis uh, of this. Uh, and also some, uh, there were some barriers regarding the regulation and some about politicals and also strategic priority and the uh, lack of qualified link, uh, workforce. So it was like an equal results between the, all the barriers. Yeah, thanks so much, uh, Thank Samad. So yeah. I think it's mainly about to identify the key challenges and address all of them in more holistic way to cover all aspects from financial, from management, from uh, political, uh, from all social around it, and also for the utilities to reform itself, uh, themselves around digital transformation. And for sure, this is need also as uh, a knowledge and know-how. And today we have uh, Professor Lars Rebi, he is a Dean of the Faculty of Special, <clears throat> Faculty of Special Development and Infrastructure Systems at Cologne University of Applied Sciences in Germany. So welcome, Dr. Lars. Uh, so uh, the Cologne University of Applied Sciences has been working on uh, water literacy and also about uh, the name of the faculty is mainly about also uh, infrastructure systems. So how do you see or what is the role of water data in uh, digital transformation and how can the digital transformation lead the water sector from data to decision? So the floor is yours. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you very much. Now my video is, no, it's moving, okay. I think transmission is fine. No, the first challenge we face in, in using digital tools, no, it's uh, here now. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Actually, uh, perhaps to, to, to start with, I can say that uh, almost 15 years ago, you know, we started the master program on integrated water resource management in, in, for the MENA region in Jordan, actually. And at that time, perhaps digitization was not in the focus uh, of, of our, our curricular design. You know, but I think we can confirm that the basic challenges of the water sector are still the same. And uh, I, I'm still a promoter of the idea of integrated water resource management. Actually, it's also a, a one, one of the, uh, the SDG targets you know, that is addressing it. Um, but we really lack integration, you know, of, especially of the different water sectors. Uh, so you use the plural here in this event. I think that's correct. But of course, also integration of water with other sectors, in particular energy, but also food security, health, it was mentioned uh, before. And so these challenges are still the same. Now, the, the capacities to use digital tools, I think this is also what, what Dan uh, Savage uh, emphasized, no? uh, this is really what we need to uh, implement into our education. So that is something that uh, we do to some extent, but I think it needs to be improved as well. So creating the capacities to deal with that data and then having a chance really to support the process of integration also through the right system architectures where data is exchanged. And I prefer actually the term of information because information that is supporting decision making, that is what we need and that is what we should focus on. So we use the term information literacy. No, this is what we want to uh, develop in the in the in our uh, let's say student minds, but also in uh, let's say if we think about capacity development, of course, also in other forms. Um, it is an extremely wide topic. No, we have a new sensor development. No, that is supporting monitoring. We have new satellite data. Almost every year, a new satellite is launched or new products are. Uh, made accessible. You no, know, you have modeling approaches which are nowadays uh, openly accessible. You no, know, the whole open source and open science uh, movement is enormous and has enormous uh, opportunities, but with that also challenges for education. 
And then this whole field of data management, I think this was also confirmed by the previous speakers. How do we teach the right use of it in order to make it beneficial? So that is something that uh, I think is a challenge ahead of us for all educators, but also it uh, embeds huge opportunities because integration, as I said, is done in a, in a very, let's say, efficient way through data integration. So that could perhaps be a yeah, food for thought, you know, how, how we can effectively use uh, data integration and information sharing uh, also to support integration in the water sector. Yeah, thanks so much, uh, Professor Lars. I think, uh, as you said, the uh, integrated water resources management and the collective uh, action is really needed to uh, to achieve the digital transformation from uh, science, from policy, and from also practice. And uh, now we uh, we will launch the the, uh, the next question, which is related to uh, the policies and the here. We, we, uh, we have Dr. Hazem al Nasser here. He was a former minister of water uh, and irrigation in Jordan. And he has been for many years, for I think for more than 15 years, an experience in, uh, in the water sector and the leading figure in the Middle East uh, in water related issues. So Dr. Hazem, how do you see uh, digital transformation in terms of knowledge, uh, is that uh, is, is the policies that we have today? Today, is it really support the digital transformation? And what are the benefits that we could harness from digital transformation so that it can tackle the water challenges in the Arab region? Thank you, Dr. Hassan. The, the benefits that water utilities or water institutions, ministries, government in the Middle East after mainly cost effectiveness and uh, better water and sanitation services delivery to consumer. Having these two objectives in mind, uh, digital water, as you all know, is a new approach uh, to be more efficient and more cost effectiveness and also to protect water resources in a timely manner if I may say, uh, but this digital water transformation in the Middle East and particular, in particular the Arab region, um, frankly speaking, is not yet there. Uh, we are lacking behind. I think maybe 90% of the world is lacking behind uh, because the transformation process is not quite easy for many reasons. First of all, you need a new generation of experts and technicians who can understand uh, uh, the data gathering, processing, and the outcomes to put it in front of decision makers in water utilities or ministries. And this um, um, kind of a new generation of experts and technicians is really not yet there uh, because digital water if you ask me today, maybe 95% is lacking in the hands of the private sector. Transformation to bureaucrats and governments and water utilities, I'm talking about the Middle East and the Arab region, is not yet there because in our region, water utilities mainly run by governments, definitely owned by governments, but also the majority is running by, by government companies or whatsoever. Having said all of that, there are certain challenges, or if I may say from my experience, some kind of confusion for adaptation of digital water uh, transformation in the area. First of all, the culture and the infrastructure. Definitely the infrastructure is not there. And as we saw in one of the questions, polls the lack of resources. These water utilities are running dry. Water utilities, unlike telecom and energy, they have plenty of revenues and earnings. Water utilities running dry. If they make some profit, maybe covering operation and maintenance, maybe some, some very little percentage of profit. And this is a major issue towards digital water transformation. 
The other issue is the confusion that the digital water vendors uh, did to the water utilities because they, the confusion is as follows. They come to you and they tell you instead, for example, just one very minor uh, detail, instead of replacing the network in Amman or Cairo, you can do have this software with some sensors and save the replacement of the infrastructure or the pipes, the old ones. Maybe it's to a certain extent it's correct, but definitely is not 100% correct. So decision makers became confused whether to do this or to go to the classical work of changing pipes, re rehabilitation of municipal networks, et cetera. So this is the, the other um, uh, challenge or obstacle or misunderstanding, whatever you want to call it. Um, the other point, which is very important, people are doubting the digital water transformation. And I will tell you why. Um, and again, a very minor detail. When it comes to water meters, the classical water meters, the mechanical ones that all the people working and the participants, they know this very well. The mechanical water meters were, يعني, they introduce a lot of losses on the utility side because of inaccuracy, uh, malpractice, et cetera. When people started and utilities started to change mechanical water meter with digital water meter, digital water meter became very accurate. And the losses transformed from the utility side to the consumer side. And people started to scream. I'm giving you uh, experience, at least from Jordan that our bills became more higher and water became more expensive. Actually, the digital water transformed the losses from the utility to the consumers. And therefore consumers, even in Jordan, in South Jordan, in Aqaba, people were demonstrating against digital water meters because they said it's more expensive simply because this transformed from utility to consumer. So this is another I would say misconception about digital uh, uh, water in, the, in, in, in our area. Uh, the last point that I would like to talk about it, um, and here we have uh, at least two or three professors, documentation worldwide of success stories related to digital water and digital water transformation is almost very little. And because people want to read, want to see, by hearing, forget it. And the documentation, whether in the academia or in the international organizations, like the World Bank, like the UN organizations, like all the important water institutions worldwide, documentation about digital water is not there. That's why the experience is not moving very quickly, because people don't have major documentation in hand. I give you another example. If you go to non-revenue water, the classical reporting of non-revenue water, you go and you find maybe hundreds of thousands of reports related to ways and means how to deal with non-revenue water. But when it comes to digital water, uh, it's really very, very little. So this is, this is one of the uh, most important uh, issue. And finally, I don't know if I took much of your time, but just one minute. Yeah. Um, the engagement, the last point, is the engagement and the harmonization among related sectors, mainly telecom and energy. Telecom and energy sectors are major players when it comes to digital transformation of water utilities. This is very easy when it comes to business to business with the private sector. So the culture within the private sector is there. So people, companies talk to each other and we finish the job. When it comes to the water in particular, again, in the Arab region, as water run by government-owned companies, et cetera, the harmonization and business to utilities is not an easy approach because simply the culture is not there. And that's why we have this harmonization among the three sectors is, is very weak and it takes time to, to, to be improved. 
and simply we need time for this. I'm very sorry I took much of your time. Thank you, Hassan. No, thanks so much, uh, Dr. Hazim, for this insight. And say indeed that we need uh, in our region to do more with less, with all these challenges that we uh, we have, uh, especially many water utilities in the Arab region are really suffering from the high levels of non-revenue water, which is mainly meaning the water is being lost before it reaches to the customer, which it can uh, reach to 50% of our water in the Arab region, the drinking water is being lost. Uh, but here we, uh, do, uh, Engineer Khaldun Khashman, uh, you, you, you are dealing with all water utilities in the Arab region and you have a, a vast experience in, uh, in water sector in our region. So you know all the challenges and also the, the issues that we could tap into to uh, achieve a new paradigm for uh, the water sector in uh, the Arab region. So how do you see what is holding us back to achieve water security with digital transfer, transformation, with all these tools, what is holding our water utilities in the region and how we can go forward with uh, digital transformation uh, in our region. Uh, thank you, Hassan. And thanks for uh, His Excellency, Dr. I want to recall uh, some memory with my friend, Dr. Ahmed. In our meeting in Abu Dhabi in 2006, when we put the priorities of Aqua, you remember, I think. I think uh, most of the people they are was talking about the technical thing only. But for me, after 13 years working in the Aqua and 25 years in utility management, I think the sustainability of utilities the services that it provides is the most important. On top of all this is the financial sustainability. And the financial sustainability comes from the return and money back they, the utility they get from the services they do. And the most important is there are two, the wastewater supply and a wastewater collection and the treatment. That's what we call it the running charges. Now, from the experience, I think the non-revenue water is the cancer of utility because it's money-wise. It's bad services. It's uh, misuse of the little resources that we have, especially in country like Jordan. That's why we in Jordan, we rely, I think, and Dr. An Nasser uh, might be remember that when we developed a business plan for Amman, where there's a capital investment and a roadmap, how we can minimize the losses and have the cheapest uh, water, uh, water resources. It's more cheaper than what we are going for in uh, desalination ore. And His Excellency approved that as a roadmap for Amman. And after that, we did one for the whole sector in Jordan and Lebanon and et cetera. Now, smart or digital, uh, uh, making the utility more digital, depending on few practices. The first one, we need a smart network that it manage itself, including the data acquisition. Is the data, is the uh, water resources, is it really major? Second thing, having a SCADA system. Third thing, DMAs dividing the, all the network into the district meters that you can really know where is your losses. Fourth thing, the pressure control, which is most important thing. And finally, I think you have to have a good customer information system and billing system built on GIS maps, and when we talk about GIS maps, I remember when I was in the Northern Governorate, we found more than 30,000 people are not in the uh, billing system and customer information system. This is a huge thing. And when we make a customer information system, we manage to 
make profit of three million every year, extra money. So having the customer information system will lead you the availability of your customers on the GIS. When you have it in the GIS system, you use it in maintenance system and router and reading, et cetera. All over that should be linked with the asset management system where I have to make uh, asset register availability, address for that, and again, link these together, the financial system, the asset system, asset management system, the financial system, the maintenance management system, and the billing system together to lead us for knowing the, what we have to deal and what to have to plan and what are our problems. Adding on that, to certify everything. Certifying the facilities, that's the TSM, which we do with uh, Egypt, knowing what's the problems. TSM is the quality management system for the facilities. How much process are okay? The uh, operator's uh, safety, the safety plan on that, consuming of uh, power, how much? And again, certify that this facility is going okay. And we are doing this in Aqua. Again, certifying the operators that uh, what Aqua did, uh, let me say that we have more than 34 certifying system according to international standards. And this certification program deals with all level of operators from basic skills to the uh, management. Once you have certified people in operation and maintenance and certified facility, smart get it, uh, network, and again, uh, having a, waste, a water and wastewater quality management system, implementing the water uh, safety plan, the wastewater safety plan, this is all in technical aspects. Then by these systems everywhere, we can harmonize and integrate all these systems to have a good tool for system and uh, digital, let me say, and smart uh, utility. And the other side, we, are, we have to talk about regulation and uh, legislation. Unfortunately, we have only three regulatory bodies in the Arab region. The most active in Abu Dhabi, the second in Egypt, and we don't have a full regulatory body in Jordan. We have something called a PMU, which uh, take care of the private sector participation, take care of the performance of utility with key performance indicator. We worked in that in Aqua, and we built a benchmarking system for the uh, Jordanian utilities and one for the region. Uh, the fourth thing that private sector participation, as Mr. Al Nasser said, I think we have to go more reform for the utilities in three aspects. And we did a big uh, project, fenced by SIDA. Dr. Mahmoud was presenting Egypt in that, the utility reform. And for uh, tariff, water for poor. I should not subsidize every, everybody. We should always target the subsidy for the poor people through restructuring the tariffs. And we did this in the time of Mr. Al Nasser. By the way, I said this because we spent many years together and I'm saying what is in the ground. It's not appraising uh, my friend, it's, it's the fact. And controlling the groundwater from misuse. And I think Jordan did very big issue in monitoring the aquifers and put the legislations not no more using for uneconomic uh, uh, activities like, uh, like in agriculture. Now for the human resources development, yani the Arab region is now uh, facing from the brain drain. People are living at the same of early ages. They are, they don't have the 
good environment that they can work. They are not, uh, and there's no incentives for them. Uh, the leadership and the management in middle and high management are leaving the water sector. Some of them willingly, like me, some of them, they are kicked out by the bad environment. That's why we need to empower the new people. And that's why we develop what we call leadership empowerment for utility managers as a training programs, including what we have to do in the private sector, what is the financial modality, how is the, what is the strategic planning. And again, be clear and uh, very transparent with your customers through the public awareness and sharing the customers and making decisions. And I remember when we were uh, preparing for the managing consultants in the North, we had a huge media and uh, uh, meetings with all the people why we are going for that. Private sector is not finding the really uh, environment to invest. And sometimes the investment has a big return and a reflection on the uh, project that we are implementing. For DC, suppose there was a proposal from a committee from uh, the government, Dr. Nasser, Bashir, et cetera, were there to reduce the cost of the project and again, increase the sharing of everybody in Jordan, not only governments, just to reduce in using the right financial models and uh, not to go for high RRR as we did that. At the end, with the absence of that, we had a very costly uh, water. And again, government are not, can't pay and people can't afford it. But affordability is one of the things that we have to look for. Saying that, I think it is a big process, as Mr. Mawad said and Dr. Dragon said, Dragon, sorry, uh, it's not easy thing, but we have to start from going for uh, the non-revenue water, accrediting and uh, certified our utilities, implementing the best practice and bring the, and all these, smart systems can be integrated, then we can, the decision maker can have a, uh, a clear vision of how to invest and how to address the international organization. Just a small example, in Lebanon, we develop a mobile application that can manage the uh, maintenance in the field and the readings in the field. And even we make it in the, Lebanese accent, not in the very big accent that the simple operator can do it and it is integrated with all the systems I do. From here, this is first step, second set the uh, asset management. We don't have asset management in most of the Arab region. We don't know. Most of the Arab region, they don't have the GIS in their systems. And in, uh, in, in our work in the, in the North, when I was there, the people available in the GIS was 99.4. This leads you that to control your customers. And the most important as Dr. Nasser is the flow meter. If it is safe, then the heart of the utility is safe. Thank okay. you. Okay, thanks uh, so much, Engineer Khaldun, for highlighting these key challenges, especially in our region with complex challenges uh, to deal with the infrastructure, especially also most of our systems are intermittent water supply in which people receive only water or once or twice per week, uh, per week. And this is very challenging also to, uh, to our region with highlighting that the smart systems needs smart solutions smart policies, smart people, and the private sector uh, participation. And uh, here, uh, to go specifically to one of the, of the case studies when it comes to uh, uh, digital applications, uh, Dr. Ahmed uh, 
Muhammad uh, for uh, the holding company uh, for water and waste water in November 2022 in 2020 with the Corona you launched an online also portal and the smart application for water bills. What uh, also His Excellency Dr. Hazem and His Excellency Engineer Khaldun has been saying about also the bills to allow customers to receive uh, services smoothly and also without the need for physical payment. So with all these challenges that you see, uh, as also we, we discussed from non-revenue water, from aging infrastructure, uh, how do you see uh, uh, digital transformation implementation with the holding company? Which stage we are now and how we can, uh, how do you see how we can shift the water utilities in Egypt to uh, fully uh, digital uh, transformation? Uh, Thank you, Hassan. Uh, yeah. Yes. If you could can just you hear please, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, put sure. your camera, please. Well, uh, I think it's again, it's from your side, I think. Ah, okay. So, Mahdi, please. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes, okay. Thank you again. Again, uh, Mr. Khaldun, thank you very much for this uh, introduction. And I think you summarized it all, actually. And, um, and the, your say reflects really the complication of the problem and the complex of the problem. Um, as I, I'll start with, the, uh, with I mentioned earlier, actually. And that's why I was very specific that when I said that to read, a, we need a sort of a roadmap, or in another word, a sort of a gap analysis. I mean, I can go, I'll go through quickly with what we have in the holding company, but I mean, after what I'm going to say, how are you going to judge me? How do you say, even if to answer your question, how far is the holding company, the subsidiary companies in terms of digital transformation? If I want to grade myself from one to 10, how do I give myself? Frankly, I cannot answer the question to you. Because we need to have benchmarking. And remember, Khaldun, when we had uh, our meetings before with the MDG issues and the SDGs, and we have differences between the other countries about the SDGs and the definitions, we actually together came what we call now the current used SDGs parameters. And uh, we were not happy at the time when we were measured as the MENA region that we, in terms of the MDG uh, grading, that we, are, uh, we looked fine. We said, no, the case is not like this. That's why we have to go deeper and dig into our situation in order to judge ourselves right. And I think we need to do the same thing when it comes to digital transformation. Uh, you are right, Hassan, about the, 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 when I mentioned earlier about the, I would say the electronic customer services. That's where we had to switch for the corona, actually. If there's a benefit of the corona, that's one of the things that we have to go for mobile uh, applications and uh, to, to shift to have a sort of an electronic customer service where I can go to the customer using uh, any other means than having face-to-face -face interaction with the customer. And that's why now we are moving to have a sort of a, sort of a platform, what we call a platform for customer uh, communication. It starts with the, for the applying for when you're having for, to apply for a new meter, uh, pay your services, uh, submit your complaints, getting answer backs. And we're now currently forming this sort of a platform all over the 25 companies. We started with 12 companies and hoping to expand this to 25 companies. So again, that's a, that's a, that's a way of orientation towards uh, printing our bills and having a sort of a, uh, electronic services to the customer. We have sort of, we have, of course, we have, you know that we have some uh, schools that belongs to the technician school that we run ourselves and we develop a learning platform. So we have e-learning platform that provide the schools with the curriculum and having the tests online and so forth. At the same time, we're looking now at the ERP systems. Some of the ERP systems are complicated, as you all know. And then uh, we have billing systems, although we have different billing systems, but they're not connected to each other. But if we look at each company, yes, each company has its own digital, for, digital transformation. But the, the, the challenge is how to integrate these systems to one billing system, to unify this billing system, for example, for the whole subsidiary companies. We are serving more than uh, 14 million uh, or 16 million customers. So uh, this again adds a challenge to the system. But coming to the question, are we applying digital transformation systems? Yes, we do. Are this enough? No, not enough because we have not yet 
establish the hole or at least the, the still the the, the 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 image is not clear how to reach 100% of digital transformation coverage khaldun yeah, mentioned about the gis i would claim that we are having a very good gis systems khaldun that you know and it started like 15 or 50 about 15 years ago when we started the companies each company now has updated gis systems with all the infrastructures on it uh, and khaldun you know that we do have an asset management system but now we are actually uh, modifying the asset management systems and acquiring some advanced uh, uh, softwares like Maximo, for example, and SAP. So uh, we are moving. But again, I think the crucial issue is to have a business plan. Each each utility should have its own business plan. You cannot manage you cannot manage what you cannot measure. So um, there's no way of saying that now the utilities cannot measure their own flow rates and they're not having digital flow meters so they can have direct uh, information about the, the the amount of water they produce and the nrw of course is one of the crucial issues as khadoum mentioned and uh, we have done some studies with the e, uh, with the ebrd at a certain point of time in the eu where we managed that uh, we estimated that egypt needs about 15 billion pounds to establish a sort of dmz areas or dmas to be able to monitor the networks we divided the country to about 10,000 DMAs. All what we have done now is about 400 DMAs. Why? Because it's very, it's, it's costly. Uh, it's not easy to go and dig it. The, 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 we have I mean, problems with the traffic to dig some the, for the pipes and the age pipe and so forth. We switched to what we call DMZ, which are larger areas in the in the zone. So we reduce the number from 10,000 to about 600. So we're moving towards this. But uh, the, the main thing is to have a sort of a roadmap. And when we talk about the information, we cannot actually ignore the security issues now because we're talking about a data management system. Uh, you're having a huge management data. The, then you have to be, make sure that this is a source that comes to a sort of a national security issues, actually, when it comes to information about the customers and the rate of consumptions and so forth. So again, securing this uh, information system is also very important to be taken into consideration. Thank you, Hassan. Yeah, thanks so much, Dr. Ahmed, for emphasizing on the need for a, a, a roadmap and a business plan, but also to uh, a key performance indicators. And as you know, we, uh, we have been talking about non-revenue water as a percentage of uh, non-revenue water is also is misleading somehow. And also it is giving, misleading. Yeah, and the giving is a challenge also in the region that we have intermittent water supply, which is completely different from continuous water supply in terms of uh, operation and the management. And here we come, uh, we, we go forward to the discussion coming to uh, Professor uh, Dragon. We, you, you see now the examples and the challenges in, uh, in the Arab region. So which steps do you see that we need to, uh, to go forward with it. And we have like an example, we have an aging infrastructure and we have the current infrastructure. Should we just put digital technologies on it or reform or rehabilitate uh, the infrastructure itself to start it with really a good system? So what are, uh, what, which tools that you, or, or roadmap I could say, as Dr. Ahmed uh, has been saying, that we or steps that we could follow to get uh, to this point. Thank you. Thank you. That, that, that's a very difficult question, but I will try. Um, the, the, the first point I would like to make is um, if you want to improve something, you know, you need to know where you are at this moment. So a good survey of where the, if you're talking about a water utility or water provider, you need to know where you are in terms of non-revenue water, in terms of digital systems that are already in place, in terms of the infrastructure. Um, and I'm talking about physical water infrastructure. Uh, so uh, that's the beginning of the process. And then like with any planning, you create a vision. And that vision is for 10, 15, 20 years, whatever it is. And with that vision, you start planning the, the process. So very structured um, approach. And, um, you know, um, 
whether we invest in pipes or in digital or a combination depends on the situation. Um, let's not forget that, um, you know, uh, even in areas where people for over 50 years treat wastewater and uh, use it for drinking water, we're talking about Windhoek in Namibia, and we're talking about also PUB in Singapore. So uh, you don't have to be high technology, high investment, financial um, kind of country organization to be able um, to do that. And I, the key thing is carrying the people all the way. Even when you're taking the stock of what you have right now, you, the people who are working for the utility, uh, the, the people who are leading the utility from the top have to be involved um, in the process. So the process is kind of uh, consensus. Um, once we agree what our goal is, what our vision is for the organization, then we move on. So, uh, and it will depend on the utility uh, by utility, whether they kind of think that the first investment should be in some physical infrastructure, but you know, to monitor what is happening with physical in infrastructure, you have to have, um, you know, digital means. You have to have, uh, for example, if we're talking about um, water utilities, water metering, bulk water metering. I'm not talking about metering of, um, of customers. That comes uh, much later. I would say you need to know what is put into the system. And you need to have a better understanding of non-revenue water. So the volume and then water quality, obviously, it, it's part of it. So um, we cannot just rely on taking samples once a week or once a day and then claiming that 99% of the time we have good quality if you don't have continuous uh, measurement. So uh, the first step taking the stock and deciding where do you want to be, considering your financial resources, your human resources, and also how do you have um, the, the enough of those resources to get to your um, vision. Thank you. Thanks so much, uh, Professor Dragon. You really uh, hit the, <laughs> one of the most really challenges for, uh, for the region. Especially now we are calling to lift forward toward the digital transformation, but given the challenges in the MENA region, we have to look before we leave. <laughs> and this is very important to look at uh, all issues that we need to, uh, uh, to address it with digital transformation. We, uh, we launched the two questions regarding uh, uh, the challenges and the benefits. Uh, so Samar, can you present the two questions that we launched? Yes, of course. Uh, just one second. Yeah, the question, the question about the policy that we, the, from the knowledge, from your knowledge, is the current water policy support the digital transformation and water sector? Uh, the majority of the answer was to some extent, as we heard from uh, also from our expert here, and some said no, that this is the case in also in some countries. And we have like six percent, yes, definitely, and nine percent not, not sure about this. Thank you. Thank you. The next one on the benefits. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, okay. Uh, thank you. Yeah, for the benefits, uh, the highest percentage is agreeing with improved decision making with scenario planning as obvious and as highlighted by the panelists, most of them. And the, the next is about improved water governance. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much for your participation. Yeah, thank you. So these are, you, we, we can find now like many benefits around the digital transformation, but it's mainly how we can reach to fully uh, digitalize the water systems in our region. We need uh, many issues that we have discussed, uh, but uh, giving from the science perspective, uh, uh, Professor Lars, 
what uh, are the requisites for us as we as we said that we need to to look before we leap uh, toward the digital transformation what are the requisites that we should take and how do you see what could how how could be the way forward for us uh, to digitalize uh, the water sector yeah thank you very much uh, perhaps regarding the last poll and also some previous discussion i think it's important to also emphasize that let's say a low performance is not getting any bit better if you digitize the processes you know? mm -hmm. so that means we have to really uh, first of all think about the whole world system we want to manage and how to improve it um, and uh, i can tell you from our university what when they many people here think about digitization in a way they take the process that is they digitize the forms and then say, oh, now fill it in digitally. And then they think everything is running better. To the contrary, this is often leading to confusion and 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 even more work you know, instead of uh, ease of work. So we have to be, first of all, sure. And, and I think, again, Darren uh, Savage said it you know, about it, where are we, where do we want to go, and how do we improve the system? And then digitization can be a help. Of course, Hazan, you said smart. If, if we have everything is smart, we are wonderful, fine. No, that is no problem. Smart cities, smart people, smart go smart governance. Of course, that would save everything. But uh, it, you are not getting smart with digitization. That's very important. No, and so we we have to first of all think uh, how do we want to improve it, and then how and and uh, digitization can help us here. No? And perhaps uh, yeah, you asked for the prerequisites. Of course, um, um, on one hand, um, you have to, and and again, I think. Now, the, most of the discussion is about networks and pipes and, and water utilities. You know, it, it's for sure a central part of the water sector. But to run a good water management system, you know, that means to reach water security at a national level or regional level. Also, the decision makers in water, they need information about the population, about the land use, about the climate and weather and all that. It's all outside the water sector. And uh, vice versa, other sectors need data from the water sector. So. We have to think about, uh, first of all, uh, the, the information infrastructure uh, that, that allows all that. And um, I, I think from the experience we have, for example, in Europe, we have heard perhaps about Gaia-X. It's a, it's a European effort to build that information infrastructure. It's a huge effort and it's related to the technology. It's related also to the regulatory frameworks, which you need. You know? So it, I think it is a very big challenge, but it can have huge benefit for the whole economy of course no? and last but not least also i think that is important for such a let's say key sector like the water sector we have to think about uh, security issues you know because uh, you have of course uh, always the danger of cyber attacks so you're talking about critical infrastructure so introducing digitization also makes the system more vulnerable immediately you know? so that is that's something that it needs to be regulated and um I think for here in my state in, in North Rhine Westphalia, I, I think now the government they, they they realized recently that open data is a is a big source for the economy and, and they invest a lot in making data available. But it took a long time. We know this since decades already, you know, but sometimes you have to convince different levels of decision making in order to 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 have such supportive structures. But there's I, I think these are the ways to go and uh, perhaps also reference to to an ongoing project which we call from data to decision uh, water security in jordan from data to decision where we uh, try to connect the the data with a better decision making and also the cooperation between science on one hand and practice on the other hand because i i think this is still a treasure that we use too little no the the this is the potential of cooperation between academia that means education but also generating knowledge through research on one hand and then systematically using it in 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 in, in utilities and what in authorities but also in the in private um in the private sector because and and that has mutual benefits it's not that uh, only science is providing benefit for the sector of course we do better science if we have a demand-driven approach. You know? So mm -hmm. that is perhaps an example where we also say, step by step, we can reach this information literacy and a, and a better 
let's call it a, a framework for digitization um, and, and everyone has to contribute to that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Professor Larsa, to emphasize as we say, for smart systems or smart water sector, it needs smart people. And we need to invest in people as also we all uh, said that. So uh, we can launch the next question. It would be about also what are the recommendations to go forward? And uh, we can, uh, we have now like 15 minutes for Q&A. So maybe we can start the Q&A. Uh, Ibrahim, could you? I started to say uh, which questions we have to, uh, and uh, who is saying this question, affiliation, and also to whom he would address to, or she address to the panel. Yes, thank you. Um, there are some questions, but most of them are not directing the question to some to specific panelists, mm -hmm. but I think I can distribute them throughout. So one, one is from Gerard. John is saying, for those who does not have an existing water utility or a country with water providers that are not that developed, in case of Philippines, how do we bridge breeding, providing water services to digitalization of water services? That seems a huge leap. That's what he's saying. Okay, maybe we can down uh, take, uh, take down of the questions and then we can uh, with the panelists to see uh, who is interested, uh, who, who would take this uh, question. So next questions. Yeah, um, can get another interesting question up here. For so, Samar, uh, do you have the questions? Yeah, I have a two direct question. So I will post it in the chat also. The first question uh, uh, is to uh, engineering uh, dragon is about uh, you said you, you said something about having uh, making a survey as a start. So someone who's asking, do you have a validated survey form that I can adapt in my study? The question is from ADG White. Um. I could look into it. We may have it here at, um, at KWR, but the, the key thing is to look uh, into physical infrastructure, what is available, you know, what state it is, uh, energy uh, usage. Uh, it's, it's a very kind of involved process, but it's a necessary process to holistically manage um, a utility. For example, I found out in our research that quite a few utilities spend money on reducing operating um, uh, costs through energy, whereas um, you know they're spending lots of money on heating spaces that they shouldn't heat. So all sources kind of of waste uh, could be identified through um, a detailed survey, and that's where where we need to start. So I could look into it. I cannot promise I can find one, but uh, definitely. Then looking into what software is being used within the organization, uh, what kind of data is collected? Where is the data stored? Is it in paper form? Is it somewhere digital? Is it on somebody's computer or it's in, in, uh, in the cloud? All of those kind of have to be taken into account. Um, uh, taking the stock of what is uh, being done currently. Yeah, thank you. And the other question is uh, to uh, Dr. Hazm al Nasser on the Dr. Khaldun. Uh, someone is asking, uh, the question is from, from Wood, and he was asking, or he, she, sorry, uh, how do you see the, the efforts KSA is presenting, undertaking, uh, introducing management contractor operator in six clusters? Um, Alleging this with the introduction of automated meter, improved customer databases, and high effort um, communication in the social media. So that question is not, uh, yeah. Can you repeat it again slowly? Yeah, uh, I put it in the chat also because uh, I think something oh, yeah, okay. is missing. Yes, let me. Yeah. Uh, on the chat. What's the best part? Yeah, so it's mainly about how do you see the efforts uh, for Kingdom uh, Saudi Arabia. Yeah, Saudi Arabia, since I think they have been implementing projects regarding this. 
uh, in terms of automated meters because you uh, you you mentioned also the, the need for also to work with meters and yes. to have it automated improve the customer databases and all these efforts how do you see it if you allow me um, uh, dr hassan and uh, khaldun um, the kingdom of saudi arabia i have to admit they did profound reforms in the water sector over the last few years and the water utilities in particular the national water company became one of the most prominent companies in the region in terms of adopting new technologies cost effectiveness uh, and innovation uh, scada system automated uh, digital water meter etc yet we have talked about the great job the Saudi is doing when it comes to desalination and the new technologies in desalination. So I see Saudi Arabia is one of the uh, really stars in uh, water sector reforms. I wrote an article maybe, uh, maybe two years ago and the uh, uh, title of that article was the most important reform in the current century when it comes to water was in Saudi Arabia, where the government cut down um, irrigation and over pumping of groundwater by almost half over seven years. This was tremendous sustainable move and protection for the precious groundwater resources they have in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. So yes, I see Saudi Arabia and in particular the water companies in the right track. They do a lot of restructuring. I understood now they are separating completely the wastewater management from the water and uh, uh, desalination from both water and wastewater, um, which will definitely uh, lead to a better water management in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, uh, Dr. Hazem. And I think also for engineer Khaldun, it would be in the same. What are the success stories or stories that you see really when it comes to implementation of <clears throat> digital transformation in our region? Uh, which countries do you see that they are really moving in the right track? Yeah, and, uh, after COVID uh, and people start again working, Mm -hmm. We had many contacts with Saudi Arabia. Now, and actually we gave proposals in two fields there, or three ones. Mm -hmm. One uh, belongs to make assessments for the training programs they are doing, not mm -hmm. only in water, in everything, in six mm -hmm. main areas and uh, linked it with the 2030 vision of Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. and how also to involve the industry in inventing environment to keep especially only also the Saudi people to be engaged. Mm -hmm. Saudi, Saudization, let me call it. And uh, again, what invention we have to do and the most uh, impressive thing that after those nominations, those nominees are getting training how to follow up through a, uh, uh, let me see, platform about their mm -hmm. performance, about the industry, about the environment that the industry are doing. It's a five years project. Uh, we were in partnership with some people. Let us see what will happen. So. Mm -hmm. Taking this, it's real uh, initiative to know the needs of the people and the workers. And this is a good reform. The second one, uh, I know that they again remake uh, the announcement for, I think, five ma new management contracts. Mm -hmm. As for Riyadh, and we participated in uh, giving the uh, uh, let me building capacity portion with one of the international companies again now in the international before uh, 
joint companies are reforming and between uh, without more information I can't give. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, the third one is they are asking now for new training programs, which is not classical. Yani the one we also bid for wastewater uh, building in wastewater for Tabuka and uh, Medina. Mm -hmm. Now their way of thinking is different. But again, uh, there is a new uh, also management contracts for Tabuk, for Jeddah, for uh, Miyahuna, Jeddah. Mm -hmm. But I think, and uh, yani we say in Arabic, we can't give Malik bil Medina. That means uh, give the bread for the bakery. I think the management contracts is not the solution. It's a good step to start going for more commercialization. Mm -hmm. And what we think is a national companies, and this is what we are working, we're working together in the water sector when I was employee of the ministry, that to empower the local people to lead at the end their utilities on commercialization or corporatization. It means to lead the utilities for sustainable financial utilities with the best, providing the best services in a very economic cost. Yeah. Saying that we, these uh, private sector are paying the way as we did in Miyahuna, when Dr. al -Nasr, he refused to, to uh, continue the management contract. And he said, we have to go ourselves and we are doing. Akaba is one of the most efficient utility regarding to the cost recovery, regarding to uh, digitization of uh, mm -hmm. uh, the utilities, regarding to the cost recovery, regarding to the service, regarding to the uh, transparency dealing with the customer. Yeah. Again, uh, let me say Saudi Arabia is going taking a very brave uh, uh, decisions, but again, we are looking for more than national company in different setup and reform that will take a place and no problem to have managing consultants with them. Some yeah, just one minute, uh, Engineer Khaldun. I finished. Yeah. Yeah, and Dr. Okay. Dr. Mu'awad, remember that we did big study in re utility reform mm -hmm. uh, regarding and case study. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much, Engineer Khaldun. As we have uh, five minutes, so uh, from uh, we, we cannot address all the questions, but all the questions we have, and we can follow up with all uh, the participants. And for sure, this will not be... Uh, uh, the first webinar, we would have many webinars uh, as we have seen that there is a need for digital transformation. So uh, from the panel, we need uh, one message in one minute from each one and we will start uh, uh, with uh, Dragon and then uh, Dr. Ahmad, uh, uh, Professor Lars Revi and then Dr. Ahmad Ma'awad and uh, Engineer Khaldun Khashman and then Dr. Hansen. The floor is yours. Hey, um... Well, I think we, we've heard lots of interesting um, facts from the, um, you know, people who work in the MENA area. And I think uh, that, uh, that gives us a pretty good picture of the, of the current situation. Um, I think, uh, like everybody else, the region will move uh, or has moved in the digitalization process in various areas. But as I said, water is um, normally lagging, and it's not just in the main region, uh, because of this discrepancy of the value and cost of water. Uh, there is not enough financial um, kind of capability to solve all the uh, problems in the water sector. Um, but nothing can stop uh, digitalization that is in the function of improving uh, the delivery of the services. Not digitalization for its own sake, but in order to improve the services. So I'll stop with that. We don't have much time. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thanks so much.
Professor Lars? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I, I, well, I think that digitization provides huge opportunities. We have seen that throughout the discussions, but it's uh, demanding also a lot from us. And that is not so much the hardware or the software, but the brainware. So that is where we need to work at. And uh, I think the, the need is really there for knowledge exchange because there's a lot of expertise, there's a lot of experience around. So we need to find ways how to uh, make use of this experience and, and, uh, and have a framework to exchange it. I think then uh, this whole process can be uh, speed up. Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, Engineer Khaldun. Well, uh, well, I think uh, you can buy many digital systems to run every functionality and business. But the most important, you need the people who operate it and maintain it. And here I would like to emphasize in continuous learning and human resources capacity building regarding to governance, regarding to water allocation, regarding to water pricing. That is very important. Mm -hmm. Regarding to using all the new tools that will give the decision maker how he can make his water budget, his investment plan. And moreover, we need a political commitment from governments. And you, put, you uh, submit your, uh, as utility, you submit your uh, budget, the Ministry of Finance will say, okay, this is 1,000 for building capacity and 1,000 for transferring this utility to digital one. I think this is very important. It's not only water supply, but you want to make it more efficient. No more money. In the world. You can't finance the mega, mega project. You can't subsidize forever but you can provide good efficient services with small margin of cost of benefits from the utility and affordable from the customer. Thank you. Thanks so much. Uh, Dr. Ahmed Mahawad. Yes, of course. Um, I mean, again, uh, of course, this, has, uh, this uh, webinar has shown the importance of digital transformation and that really this topic needs more Hassan from your side if you can arrange mm -hmm. more of this. But to include this, I think that first, of course, mindset has to be changed. The orientation for the people and the workers. Uh, allocation of funds is very important and relates to the tariff. And as Anjir uh, Hazem mentioned, it's always the utilities that are yani, underpaid. And that's why there's a problem allocating the funds, but it's important. And the most important thing is setting priorities. Okay, there, are wide, there is wide need. Do, do you start with NRW? Do you start with water quality? Do you start with the measurements? But let's set priorities in order to start with. And at the end, if we can get a way of having a sort of a checklist or a KPIs for the utility, this will have a benchmarking for all the utilities to start with. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Dr. Hassan. Uh, thank you, Dr. Hassan. Um, digital water is needed. It's useful. Uh, however, the transitional period uh, need to be done wisely and systematic and will take some time to achieve. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much, Dr. Hazem. I think as we have seen, there is a need, a, a lot to talk about uh, the subject and the need more work. And for that, we will foster cooperation with all partners to work on this and provide a platform for our region with, uh, with uh, the support from uh, Middle East Water Forum and uh, uh, Aqua and all partners that we have uh, today, and even for the need for uh, an open tools. And I think this could be an opportunity for us to discuss it later. Also, there is uh, Ketium tools, which is really offering an open tools that we can uh, go further and also to implement it and test it in our region and discuss more about it. So uh, thanks so much everyone for your participation in this uh, webinar. Uh, thanks you for your attention, for the panelists, uh, also for their great insights and also 
issues that we need to go forward with it to implement a digital transformation. Uh, I wish you all the best and thanks so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Hassan. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you very much.